Joining me now is Chuck Rosenberg. He's a former U.S. attorney, a former senior FBI official, and an NBC News contributor. Chuck, thanks so much for joining me. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Kristen. So, Chuck, just set the stage, if you would. What are your key takeaways from this? We are talking about nine charges. Three of them are felonies. How serious are these charges? Well, felonies are always serious. And if the allegations in the indictment can be proved in a court of law, and I assume they can, uh, it's a very bad day for Hunter Biden. Mm. In terms of what we're hearing from Hunter Biden, his attorney, Abby Lowell, said this, and I want to just read this to you and then get your reaction to this. He says, based on the facts and the law, if Hunter's last name was anything other than Biden, the charges in Delaware and now California would not have been brought. What do you make of that? And what do you make of that as a defense, Chuck? Yeah, I have a couple of reactions to it. Um, if his name wasn't Hunter Biden, he wouldn't have been paid millions of dollars um, by entities in China and Ukraine either. So, you know, there's some benefits associated to the name and there are some costs, but I'm not sure it's true that he wouldn't have been charged. I think what Mr. Lowell is basically formulating is a defense strategy where he's going to argue that his client, Hunter Biden, was selectively prosecuted. That's a sort of prosecutorial misconduct allegation. It's tethered to the 14th Amendment. You can't prosecute people based on race or creed or color or religion. And I know we would all agree with that. And what Mr. Lowell is saying is that Hunter Biden is being prosecuted for another impermissible category, his political affiliation, his father's job, his last name. It's going to take a lot of evidence for that to succeed in court. It's one thing to say it on television, Kristen. It's quite another to produce it in court. Um, and uh, from what I've seen, at least in the public record, uh, there are plenty of very good reasons to charge Hunter Biden with tax evasion, including that he apparently evaded his taxes. So I don't know that this succeeds other than uh, in the political arena. Mm. Well, speaking of the political arena, I was just talking to Ryan Nobles about the fact that Republicans are potentially going to move to uh, open an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. Chuck, as we made very clear at the top of this broadcast, this indictment does not mention President Biden at all. Is there anything, anything that could be problematic for President Biden within that context? Within the indictment, no, I don't see it. I mean, I've read the indictment, Kristen, other than someone that he loves very much has been charged with a bunch of federal crimes. If it's a bad day for Hunter Biden, it's also a, pre a bad day for the president. Um, but that said, you know as well as I uh, that impeachment is a political act, not a legal act. And if um, members of Congress see fit to indict, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, impeach uh, the sitting president, uh, then it's a political act. And so don't I wouldn't conflate the two. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that there's no evidence uh, in the indictment concerning President Biden doesn't seem to slow their role, uh, but it's a political act. What I'm really focused on is the um, implications for Hunter Biden and the implications in a court of law. Mm. That's where evidence actually matters. You have said that one of the things that stands out to you is that one of these charges relates to after Hunter Biden it says that he was no longer dealing with his addiction problems. What are your key takeaways and how significant is that piece of this indictment? Sure. So um, a couple of the returns were filed in 2020 when uh, Hunter Biden was uh, allegedly sober. In order to prove a criminal tax case, you have to prove that a defendant acted intentionally, uh, not by accident or mistake or inadvertence. Making a mistake on your tax return is not a crime. It's a mistake. Uh, but taking false business deductions uh, and then submitting the return uh, under your signature is a crime. And so those returns that were filed and were, were, were filed falsely uh, when uh, Mr. Biden was sober, you know, sharp of mind, mm. are a problem for him. And by the way, Kristen, if I may add one thing, uh, I know some people have argued that um, Mr. Biden voluntarily paid what he owed, but he did that after the investigation mm. began. And so that's not a voluntary disclosure. It's like robbing a bank. And then when the FBI starts knocking on doors in your neighborhood looking for you, you return the money to the bank. It's not really an act of contrition. It's really an admission. It's a really uh, important piece of the context. Chuck, let's talk 
timeline? What will you be watching for in terms of how this case unfolds? Could and, and would you expect Hunter Biden to be in court in the coming months? And I say that in part because former President Trump, who's, of course, an actual political candidate, is facing four separate indictments. We are anticipating a court date for him in March. What's the yeah. timeline you're looking at here? You know, it's a great question. So we've already seen uh, in many of the cases affecting Mr. Trump that sh some judges move their dockets quickly and some move them slowly. And it's hard to know um, how the judge assigned to the Hunter Biden case will move his or her docket. Do I expect that this case will be tried in 2024? I really don't. Ooh. I do expect we'll see motions and arguments and all sorts of procedural happenings in the case. Uh, but getting this case to trial quickly, I think, is a big lift. Is it possible? Sure. But it's all going to turn on the judge. And if that judge can move their case with some alacrity, if they can manage their document appropriately, it's possible. I wouldn't put a lot of money on it. OK. And uh, just as we continue to look toward the future, the special counsel has been very clear that this investigation is ongoing. It's a point that they made after they first indicted Hunter Biden on gun charges and then came these new charges. Should we take that to mean that there could be more charges coming? Well, I would take them at their word. I mean, the fact that it's ongoing doesn't mean that it's ongoing only with respect to Hunter Biden. They may have come across other crimes in the course of their investigation. They have a duty to run that down. Uh, nor does it mean that other people will be charged. It means an investigation is ongoing. Uh, if prosecutors have a good faith basis to run an investigation, then by all means, they ought to run it. Uh, and then we will see where it leads. Uh, it may lead nowhere. Uh, we shouldn't get ahead of it. Uh, but we should take them at their word that they have work to do. OK, well, we will do that. Chuck Rosenberg, thank you for helping us break down a complicated set of legal facts. Really appreciate it and good to see you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.